Hey guys, it's Mei Mei, and today this is your standalone video for the three page folio. We're going to call it the three page folio because it uses three pieces of eight and a half by 11. You guys would have seen this in um, our Saturday video, I think it was. We're going to link all the stash busting videos below. There's a playlist. We'll link that for you so you can see where this comes from. Now, we are also doing this as a swap. So if you would like more information on that, the information is in the description below. Okay, let's make this guy. I'm going to use the joy of life. Look how beautiful this paper is. I wanted to use it. I thought this is a perfect place to do it and let you guys see how this works. And, you know, I find lately that I'm not giving much love to my plain paper. I'm not telling you guys what I'm using. This one I chose to use today is brown butter from Brutus Monroe. It is absolutely beautiful cardstock, and that's what we're going to use. And we need three sheets. So we're going to score two pieces with the same score marks. So I'm just going to grab those out, and we're going to put them into our scoreboard on the 11-inch side. And you're going to score in two places, or actually three places, at three at nine and at nine and a quarter. And like I said, we're gonna do that on both of these pieces. So I'm gonna go back. This is really thick, rich cardstock. I'm gonna flip this over and score the back as well. You know, I tell y'all sometimes when you're using a really thick quality cardstock, it's best to score both sides because it just breaks up the fibers of the paper even more for you. We're not cutting through or anything because it's a rich, thick cardstock but it does help. Actually, sometimes I find this works with super thin cardstock too to keep it from tearing. So there you go. All right, three, nine, and nine and a quarter on this one as well. And on our last sheet, it's super easy. We're gonna score it in half at five and a half. All right, let's do our folding and our creasing. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold this guy down and crease it. And I'm gonna do the same on the others and just fold and crease every line. And we're gonna lay these down beside each other identically. So you've got the same flap here that you have here. We'll be gluing this flap to the back of this page. So I'm just gonna use art glitter glue, but you could use sticky tape here if you'd rather, but I find the art glitter glue works just fine. So I'm applying glue to the flap alone. So we're on the outside or the right-hand side of our score mark. There's two scores right there. We're on the, out, the outside. And I'm gonna take this guy and lay it right over. Now we're gonna line this up to the score mark. We're not gonna cross our score mark because if we cross it, we won't be able to fold this up and we can test it and make sure we haven't crossed it and we didn't. And we're just gonna glue this guy down. I've got some glue wanting to seep out, so I'm gonna give that a second to kind of catch there. Okay, so on the original one I just showed you, I glued this piece directly down just like this and this gave us this four page flap, okay? But you can make this a pocket. And in this one, I'm gonna make it a pocket just so you can see two differences. So to do that, we're gonna put glue at the bottom and at the top of this guy as a pocket. Now I'm gonna also run a bead of glue right here. Not a very big bead of glue, but I just want a little extra hold on. You know what I'm saying? Because this little flap is gonna be holding a lot of cardstock and things like that. So I need this to hold on nice and secure. Now I'm gonna line this up to the score mark. I do not want it to give me any resistance. So don't go over your score mark. And wow, my glue is seeping today. I'm heavy handed. We refill my bottle and I have to get back in the swing of it. So now what we have is a pocket here, okay? And we're glued down on the edges. Now I will tell you, I think this is gonna take away from the stability. I think this is gonna make this a little less sturdy. So if that makes you nervous, you might just wanna glue that guy down and treat him like a page, okay? Now we've got this guy installed. We do need to close this one down like a pocket and this one's easy. Just glue on two sides and fold it over. It's not holding anything into the book or getting in any kind of real stress. So we're just gonna fold this guy over. And as always with me, you know I like to kind of pinch to make it lift up in the middle so that things slide in and out of it really easy. So you'll just give that a little pinch on the corners and let that dry. And guys, that is the folio itself built. That's how quickly these guys go together. Now we can start covering it. Now to cover this guy, in the blog post that we are linking in the description, we're gonna have all the measures for all the little pieces that you'll need. And I'll have two different measures here. I'll have one if you only wanna have this as a page and not a pocket, and then I'll have a measure if you wanna have this as a pocket. So what I'm gonna do is cut my paper down to my measurements that I already have pre-saved for myself. And like I said, you'll get those too. So using this Mente paper, I can do this mystery style. I really don't have to study much on this. And I'm trying to decide if I want to do it mystery style or if I want to pay attention. Um, let me flip through. 
I'm going to cut a large quantity of it mystery style. I think it'll be cool. Let's start with the cover. Let's pick what we want on the cover. Because my cover has that side flap, I have to be mindful of that because of where these kind of live, these images kind of live. Like this would be behind the flap. Um, this would be in front of the flap. This would be behind the flap, depending on how I do my cover. So let me see what I find. Oh, this is really cute. That would be great on the cover in that corner. Yeah, I think that's the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that one before I do any of the mystery cutting of those pages. Now, the cool thing about this album is all of your pages, all of your cover pages are eight and a quarter. Unless you decide to do something different, all of your main pages are eight and a quarter. This one in particular is five and three fourths. This will be the part that does the, the bulk of our cover work, right? So let me show you what this means. I'll show you. We'll glue it down later. But it'll live like that. Isn't that cute? And then our little flap, that whole piece. Oh, so cute. All right, now then, I can use this page as well. Let's go ahead and cut this one down to five and three-fourths. Since we're doing it mystery style, I tell you what, I'm going to flip it around because I want to keep more of the flowers. So I'm going to do it this way. And then this can be the back of our book or inside or wherever we want it. So I'm going to put that one aside. And I need one more that same size. So I'm going to take this one and do it mystery style. So I'm going to cut this down to eight and a quarter just like so and the big image is on the other side I cannot see it I'm gonna cut it down to five and three fourths because that's the third one I need that size and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it again to five and a quarter because I need that as well so same eight and a quarter height wise but I need five and a quarter again so that gives me one of those and I need some more so I need two more of that same measure. So again, doing this mystery style, I'm going to cut to eight and a quarter. I'm going to turn this sideways, and I'm going to cut that measure twice, so five and one fourth. Now, I will probably use this side and the flip of this, but I think it's neat to do it this way because I don't really know what I'm getting over there. Now, I need some thinner pieces, like just two and a quarter, two and three-fourths. I think I'm going to use these guys and see if I can't mix them up a bit. So, let's cut this one down. Let's do two and one-fourth here. I could probably get several of these um, several of these albums from a pack of paper. And then eight and a quarter here. So, there's one strip. That's going to cover one of the pocket flaps. Then, I also need two and three fourths by eight and a fourth three times. I just have my measures of, by the way, you can do this too or print it out from the blog post. This is how I have mine done here to the side. So I need two and three fourths by eight and a quarter three times. Let's see what we can get out of this sweater. This is cute. All right, so let's go. Let's put it down to two and three fourths first. The beauty of these paper packs, just any paper pack that you're working with is curated to work together. So it really doesn't matter how you do this. You can lay it out later to make it match. It will work. So these are all of my cuts all stacked up so I know what sizes I've got here and now we can install them. Let's go ahead and put on the front cover because I know which one that is and I don't want to accidentally put it somewhere else. Now if you want to do any corner rounding or anything like that or decorative corner edges, this is the place to do it. I'm not going to do it for this one. I think this is this paper's pretty just like it is. So I'm just going to glue these guys down. I love how with Menta you pretty much can get a cover just by gluing a piece of paper down. It's so beautiful. Breaking in here to ask you to hit that red subscribe button. It's free. Also hit the bell button beside it. You can help me reach my big goal this year of 400,000 subscribers. Okay, back to crafting. I also love this brown butter with this. So pretty. Also imagine inking. If you wanted to ink, do that before this point. All right, now let's go ahead and glue the back on because I know which one that one is. I'm going to use this as the back, although that would be super cute as the back as well. But I'm going to go ahead and use the pattern. I think it'll be cute to continue that front around to the back. Now, for the flaps, I am going to do some corner rounding. I think it is pretty, so I'm just going to grab my corner rounder. And I've been using my quarter of an inch a lot lately. I like this kind of slight round. So I'm going to quarter of an inch round this, just the flap. I just think that looks really pretty on the front whenever you bring this around, you can see that slight round. But that means I need to do it to my flaps that are covering here as well. And these are the pieces I cut to fit here. I'm trying to decide which one I want to be. I love that wood on there, that's pretty. I also have this pretty rose that can go here. This is your struggle with mente, which side? 
which side. This piece is cut a little thin, and you know what? I was trying to use a scrap, and it didn't work, so I'm going to have to recut this one. Okay, so now that I've corrected that piece, let's see. I've got this green floral that would be really pretty there. And then if I flip it over, I have another big balloon. I think that matches too much. I think that kind of doesn't help the situation. So it's between this guy, this guy, and this guy. I think I'm going to use this one. I know that may be unpopular looking at it, but it gives me a place to decorate too. It gives me kind of a solid background that I can add something pretty to. Did you see me just mess up? I should corner around those edges. So let me do that really quick. I'm gonna get glue in my corner around or I'm gonna be sad in a minute, but that's okay, I can clean it out. So do as I do as I say, not as I do, right? Watch the video all the way through. Let me make those mistakes so you don't have to. All right, there's that one. Let's go ahead and pick the one for in here. I love this, I wanna use this. And let's go ahead and corner around it so I don't forget. This will get some of the glue off of my corner rounder too. And then I'm gonna glue this one down. All right, let's cover on the inside. So I'm gonna glue this one down here. I considered this side, but this album that I'm making really focuses on the four by six photo. So when I put my four by six photo mat down, it would cover up our little bird anyway. So I think my photo mat when I open this book would be really pretty to be on this wood grain. So I'm gonna think like that. I wanted more of my images kind of on the outside where you could really see them, but in here where I'm gonna be putting so many large photos, I don't really need that. This, for example, I don't love this pattern. It's not my favorite. I'm not a big fan of these balloons, believe it or not. And so I think this would be good here so I can put a photo mat on it and you'll see the florals around it. So that's what I'm gonna do. It also keep me from having the wood everywhere. And while I'm doing this size, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and put it here because it goes there as well. And I love this piece. Gosh, it's so pretty. Oh, I could use that side too, but I'm gonna use the other. I love the pink floral. I know, I can't believe I said that either. Like, where did that come from? Maymay loves the pink floral. I know. I guess you just change your taste over time or you add to it, because I haven't changed anything. I think I just now love everything. <laughs> All right, this one uses a big piece and I've got this big piece here, let's see. Oh, this will be pretty. Now I know when I put a photo mat down, it's gonna cover our bird, but it'll have these pretty florals and the crowd, the clouds around it and that'll be beautiful. You don't have to put the size photos in that I am. The reason I am is because the folio swap that we're doing, we're asking that you have at least seven of the four by six photo sizes available in the book. So that's why I'm doing it this way. You can mix this up with whatever you want. You could put whatever size photos in you would like. Isn't that pretty? Love that paper. All right, let's close this guy over and now let's do these pocket pieces. And remember, if you're making it without a pocket, you just use this same size cover piece and just glue it directly on top because you'd have this glued straight down. But we're making two pockets in this one. All right, so here's our pocket flaps. Let's see what we want to use. We've got this one. We've got this sweatery one, which I really do want to add because I like that pop of yellow. We have this one, but you really can't see the um, the pattern on here, so I'll probably put it here. No, let's do this. I think this looks really good together. Let's put this, in, this one here and here, and then we can put this one here, and I have this piece that can live like this or like this. Let's see which way we like the best. I really kind of like this one because I like the mustard picking up here, although I like the shape of that one. Ooh, I'm torn. I'm gonna do this side up. I don't know, I just felt like it. It just felt like the way. I decided something. I think I'm gonna use this side up to bring the hot air balloon inside the album. I think that'll be pretty, and it also works really well next to that, that mint green wood. Can you believe how easy this is to do? Just look what we've done. We have all the pages inside covered now, right? We close this up, here's our little flap. This is a perfect little folio for a gift. Now we just add photo spots and decorate. So let's talk pocket inserts. Now we've got two pockets in this book and I wanna show you a couple options. Option number one is very simple, like I did in my first album. I just take a piece of the cardstock, I cut it seven by five, so it will house a four by six photo, and then I rounded the corners. So I'm just gonna run around here and round these corners, and this is ready to put our photo mats on it so it can slide into the pocket. Okay. Now for another option, we're gonna make a little photo booklet to go in the pocket. We're gonna take a piece that's seven by 10, we're gonna score it in half at five, and then fold it and round those corners, and that way 
we can put photos on two sides. So I'm gonna fold it like this and crease it. I love this pink sweater. I want it to show, I think it's so cute. I'm gonna round these edges with it folded. Still using that quarter of an inch side. I'm just doing very slight rounding this, this time. You can play with that and change it up ever how you like. And then let me show you where these will go. Okay, so here's our two pockets. Now I have to caution you of something. This pocket is bigger than this pocket. Why? Because we glued a little extra here for safety, remember? So I would put the single ones, the single photo sleeves, I would, or what are these, photo holders? I would put it in here because look, this will still allow me to close. But when you add this guy, it's a little too thick. It has enough body of its own that when I add it in, it hangs over slightly. So take your bigger one and put it here because you've got a lot more space in this one. See how much space we have here? And put your single one in here. Now, you might also, if you're using a sticky tape, you could probably get a much thinner section here and have a bigger pocket. But this is plenty, and we're adding two photos here, four photos here. That's six by themselves right there. So now all we need to do is add our photo mats and decorate and do our closure. You've seen me do this before. This stamp set is our collab with Genevieve, and this is um, a way to put a spot in your folio to show the recipient where to put pictures. And like I said, I'm making a four by six picture folio, so I'm gonna use this number, and I'm also today gonna use this place photo here. You actually have two on here. You have this one and this one, and I used the cursive one last time, so I'm gonna use the other one this time. Now, one thing you'll need to pay attention to is orientation, because you know that's not what I do. I'm the worst at that. But I wanna make sure that if the photo spot goes up and down, I make it look like this. I'll show you, I've already done those ahead of time. I wanna make those look like this. But if I'm doing a landscape spot for a picture, I wanna make sure that it goes sideways. So what I've done is I've just loaded these two uh, stamps onto my Misty, and I just run through and do them like this. And I think I had to do I think this book will hold 12 photos, which is really good because we did that extra little book fold. And I was talking to somebody about this recently, and you're like, only 12 photos? I gotta be honest, when I'm going somewhere, if I get 12 photos of the event, I've done real good because we want to be in the moment so bad, but we also want photos. And I'll tell you, in our Downton trip, I took over 100 pictures and used not, a, not even a minute portion of that. So a 12 photo folio from an event will be great. All right, I'm gonna start by putting my photo spots in before I decorate. The reason for that is I wanna know where I have room to decorate around, right? So remember this guy that we made. My plan for this one, the way we did this book, is to have two portrait um, facing photo spots here. And then in here, oh, I was gonna do them landscape, but you know what? I may have to switch them because of this picture. No, I don't think I do. Look, it hides right behind there and landscape is fine. So I'm gonna put two landscape in here. Now I could put them outside of here just as fine, just as easily. Um, actually, let's see. Let's do it the opposite and see if we don't like it better. I think I might. We're gonna put the landscape on the outside, portrait on the inside. While I'm gluing these down, let me remind you of something. I made these exactly four by six. The reason I did that is because when I give this to somebody and they glue in a four by six photo, I want it to feel completed. I don't want them to feel like they messed anything up or there was something extra hanging over or something like that. But if you want to, you could cut another piece a quarter of an inch larger to have a little mat hang off. And when they glue their four by six photo down, they'll then have a little matted piece. But I sometimes think People might not exactly understand that, but everybody understands this because it's kind of like, it's kind of like color by numbers. You know, it's like place four by six photo here and your album is complete. All right, I'm gonna run through, finish this little guy and our other little pullout, and then we'll start in the album. Okay, so our two little um, photo pullouts are now done this one as well as this one. And I accidentally put glue on this one without thinking and stuck it down real quick. So I just stuck one here. Now we'll head here. Now, sometimes it looks nice to put the photo straight. Sometimes it looks good to be angled in one corner. Sometimes it looks good over here. Sometimes it looks good up here, down here. It doesn't matter. Just place the photo where you think you want it and decorate around it after the fact. Well, guys, I miscounted photos. I don't know how I did, yes, I do. It's called math and I don't do it. But we have four photos here. One, two, three, four, okay? 
Then we have one, two, three, so that's seven, that's eight, and then we have nine and 10 here. I don't know how I did that, but I miscounted. So this will hold 10 photos, still plenty for any event that I can think of. Let's add a closure and I'm gonna do something. I showed you in the first video using the stickers. I wanna show you what happens if you just, if you're really simple, watch this. So these are the magnets I like to use, okay? So I have the plus side, put that one down, and the minus side, and I'm gonna let those stick together, okay? I use my pokey tool. I'm gonna release the back, see how it wants to jump up at me? I'm gonna release the adhesive backer off of one side, and then I'm just gonna place it. I'm gonna place it here, because I wanna be sure I get it well enough on the book. I'd like for it to live something like that. Not too close to the edge, and I also want it to be covered, so not too far in to the side. So I'm gonna press that down, I'm then going to lift up this side, reveal this sticky, and now I will just shut this down. Now, what I do want to do is make sure I have it good and square and at the top like it needs to be because your magnet is what's going to set everything into place, okay? So, look, that's how this is done. Now, I personally do not have a problem with that magnet showing. A lot of times when you buy something from the store that's not handmade, the magnet shows. But there's a hundred different ways to hide it. One is put it down before you put your paper down and it goes behind your paper. Use the sticker method like I show you, like I showed you before, or use your cut aparts from this paper pack. So like this is a cut apart, you could glue it down and hide it here. You could even pop it up on a little foam and have it like that and it would be super cute underneath there. I'm gonna leave these exposed, I know. I know. I want you to see that it can be done and no one will pay attention. They'll actually go, oh, cool, this thing has magnets. You see what I'm saying? All right, so let's add a few little adornments. So if you're familiar with Mente, you know you get a cut apart page and it's typically the back of the first page of the pack. So we went through and cut out every single image from that little cut apart pack. I do not have a ephemera pack for this particular paper pack. So this is what we did. We just cut all these guys out. I don't know where I'm gonna put them all, but I'm gonna lay them out so I can see them. And then as I go through the book, I, the one thing I wanna show you that I think is really important is how we're gonna install them. So let me open this here. There's a little birdhouse sticking there. And let's go right here. So what's important is when you glue something down, sticker or not, you need to make sure that you don't glue down in this area. The recipient needs to be able to, let's pretend this is a photo, okay? They need to be able to put a photo in like so, so you need to leave that edge open. So you'll just glue the part that will sit down on the sides like this, right? That's not what I wanna put there. Let me find what I do wanna put there. So I kinda like this little layout with the bicycle and the flowers, so watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some glue and I'm just gonna glue it like it were a pocket. I'm gonna put glue down here on this, on the tires, and then up here on the top, and just to the side there, because I don't wanna glue down where the picture's gonna go. So I'm just gonna glue this down like this. I'm gonna bring that in in a second. So now, the picture can slide behind there, okay? So I'm leaving that open. The next thing I wanna do is put this guy down. I just thought this was pretty back here. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that my glue goes behind this flower and this flower. So flip these guys over and just leave that part open so a photo can slide in to that corner. And it just will complete the whole look when the recipient gets it. All right, let's go through and do that all throughout.
so check it out. I'm going to call this one done. Now, I would probably go back and add some embellishments and things to it if I was giving this as a swap. Maybe, maybe some glitter tape or maybe some bling or something like that. But because I'm going to keep this one until it's time to give this to somebody, I'm going to wait and I can decorate it more when I know exactly what we're doing with it, right? So let's check it out. So when we open it up inside, look what we've got. We've got our little book here. And I want to show you, I did add some pieces kind of tucked into the pocket behind our little book because I thought that looked kind of cute and this guy will slide in like this. Then we've got our opening pages over here. I loved this. I left that very open so a photo could go back there. These guys are open so you can still get your photo in. And I did the same here but I just added the one little birdhouse. I thought it was cute there. And I overlapped these so that they hang over onto the page. I think that's really cute doing that. I did that with the little house as well. And then if we come back to the back, you can see we've got our balloons, which I think are gorgeous, and then our big photo spots. Simple, easy, but absolutely gorgeous. And one thing I think would be really pretty is if you wrapped a ribbon around and tied a bow here and have like the bow living right here with the ribbon wrap, that would be gorgeous. So just wanted to do the video to show you how to make this folio and to give you all the measurements you need. Now, I want to remind you, now until I want to say mid-June, we're doing a swap with this one. If you would like to participate in a folio swap, the information for that is in the description below. Hey, thanks so much for being here today. I hope you enjoyed this video and next week we start back our, sta our Stash Buster series, but I wanted to take a break to give you this one because so many of you guys were wanting to make them. So thanks so much for being here today and until next time, bye now.